So the first question we're going to talk about was actually left over from last month. And the question was submitted by Michael. And Michael says, hi, Rhonda, what's your take on microdosing nicotine? Is it safe? Is it effective to increase focus? Does it have other health benefits? So Michael, let's break this down uh, from the ground up. I think nicotine is this really interesting molecule that at very low doses, say a milligram or two, possibly three, can sharpen attention and reduce anxiety in the short term. We do see some data that non-smokers taking two milligrams of nicotine gum can do better on certain cognitive tasks. But here's the catch. That same study showed that four milligrams of nicotine actually made performance worse. So there's evidently a very low, sort of narrow, sweet spot, a minimum effective dose, if you will. Now, a big caveat is we don't have robust data on the long-term effects, especially for people who are microdosing consistently. So nicotine is addictive, even at modest levels. So what starts to happen is maybe a once a week experiment might turn into a multiple times a day habit. I'm concerned about how that might spiral, especially because nicotine also elevates heart rate and blood pressure, which over time can bump up cardiovascular risk. And there's a cancer angle as well. This is a bit nuanced. Nicotine itself isn't classed as a full-blown carcinogen, but there's research linking it to tumor promotion. So that's helping cancer cells survive or resist therapy. So even if you're not inhaling smoke, you're dealing with a compound that may influence the tumor microenvironments. It may influence angiogenesis. That's the growth of new blood vessels that tumors use to sort of metastasize to other areas. And it just may influence the promotion of tumor growth in general. There is a weight loss angle that people are interested in. So yes, nicotine does blunt appetite for some people. Some folks who quit smoking often can gain weight anywhere between 11 to 15 pounds in the first two years, which is pretty significant. But losing weight via nicotine is really a slippery slope because you're trading some short-term gains for a potential addiction. And then as I mentioned, the potential cardiovascular impacts independent of smoking itself just from the nicotine. I'd also like to talk a little bit about how nicotine does act as a potent driver of dopamine in the brain, which is why people often say it helps with concentration and motivation. So dopamine is essential for wanting, for craving, for doing something, that motivation to sort of move to do something. So it's not a surprise that you can probably develop a dependence on something that is tapping into the dopamine system, including nicotine. In the short term, it might give you that sort of crisp mental edge, but you have to ask yourself, am I hacking the system at a deeper cost, right? Is there a trade-off? Because chronic nicotine can rewire dopaminergic pathways so that without it, you actually can start to feel dull and unmotivated, particularly when you start to go into the higher milligram, nicotine milligram range, and when you, st when you start to go into that multiple times a day habit as well. There's also been some interesting links with Parkinson's disease. And I would say, you know, it is true there's a fascinating correlation where smokers have a lower incidence of Parkinson's, but that same population also has higher rates of dementia and cardiovascular disease. So it's really not a free pass. There's really no biological free lunch. It's more like a red flag that we're dealing with a molecule that's really, it's it's intertwined with a lot of different pathways. Some of them are beneficial, it's beneficial. Some may be harmful. So it's really something to think about. Sleep is another aspect. So on sleep, nicotine can fragment rest. So it can fragment sleep. You can see reduced REM sleep and deeper stages of sleep if you use if you use it too close to bedtime. And then withdrawal can actually throw you into REM rebound. So it sort of messes up with your mood, your sleep quality. So if you do experiment with nicotine, you really have to be mindful of the timing. You don't want to have late night doses, um, obviously, because that might disrupt your restorative sleep. So I think the bottom line, my conclusion here is if you do want to experiment a little bit, a little bit with nicotine for focus, I think you have to ask yourself if you are prepared to navigate a potential addiction risk. You have to decide, okay, yes, I am willing to do that. Um, what are the absolute smallest doses that I can take? What's the least frequent usage I can do? 
and really set clear boundaries where you you say, okay, I'm going to take this once or twice a day and that's it. Even if I want more, I'm not going to do it. So you really have to set these clear boundaries. But in my opinion, I think given the current data, there's a lot of ways you can improve cognition, right? So high quality sleep, good nutrition. I use high intensity interval training that really boosts mood, cognition immediately after doing it. Cocovia, so some of the, the flavanols in cacao have been shown to boost cognition. They increase blood flow to the brain. Deliberate cold exposure as well. Low dose caffeine. So there's a lot of other ways that you can sort of tap into that improved focus and attention um, you know, effect that you're getting from nicotine.